This is where I am, Burra. It's cold, nine degrees, and uh, but 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Anyway, I'm gonna go and visit my friends, which is why I'm here. So the friends from the sunny coast are here in their caravan, and I'm gonna go sit in the caravan in the warmth and have a hot chocolate, and then go to the pub for dinner. Well, here we are, we're in the caravan. <laughs> Look at it. With the great luxury. With the great nomads. We've got the TV going. We've been looking at photos on the TV. It's got Dunny and Petty Shower. It's got everything. Look at it. All these cupboards. Don't look in the cupboard. Don't show what's Can't, in the cupboard. That one doesn't even open. Oh, well, look at that. Look at that. How good is that? Um, anyway, so now we're going to go to the pub for dinner. And that's John and Fiona, by the way. So I think it's a copper mine. I couldn't be bothered reading the signs because I'm lazy, stupid. Um, but yeah, and there's a copper mine. That was the biggest, one of the, one of the made five percent of the world's copper back in the day, which would have been quite a bit. The rest of this stuff, if you want to go inside any of them, you've got to pay twenty-five dollars and you get a key, and then you can go around all these different places, which is actually probably fairly reasonable. But I'm in a bit of a hurry today. I want to get down to Birdwood to the Motor Museum and check that out. So, there's no shortage of old ruined buildings in South Australia to look at. It is full of them. They are absolutely everywhere. If you like old crumbly buildings, South Australia is definitely the place to go. I'm walking back to the bike. It just reminded me. Just a shout out to the guys at Tyres for Bikes in Perth. Uh, left my bike there for a few days. They put tyres on it, they serviced it, they mucked around with the head bearings and found out that the head bearings are a bit stuffed so they loosened them back off again. Still rides really nicely. Um, did a fantastic job, couldn't have been more helpful. Um, stored the bike, stored all my wet riding gear, let it dry out. So, big shout out to the guys at Tyson for Bikes in Perth. made it to Birdwood and I've come to the National Motor Museum. I've been here before, uh, 30 some years ago when I was just a little tucker, well relatively little, and I enjoyed it very much and I've come back to have another look to see 
what's been added to it over the last 30 years. So I'm sure there's quite a few things. So anyway, we'll truck inside and have a look. Now I've had a few accusations that I'm carrying too much stuff with me. Well, please see exhibit one. VFR 750. Oh, baby. <laughs> Piazza. I think there's actually a book I had once years ago called In Search of the Holden Piazza where a couple of guys in a Holden Piazza drove around and visited all the remaining Holden Piazzas in Australia. It was pretty interesting. There's not many left. Terrible car. Serious cooling fins on that thing. Holy moly. Spencer Gulf. Both very interesting chaps. Chaps, I sound like I'm 100 years old. Both interesting blokes. I tried to stay in a caravan park last night in Meningi, but the caravan park is run by people that don't actually want customers, so they have the reception all locked and they have some phone numbers that you can ring, but none of them ever get answered. So I think the impression is that unless you book weeks ahead and you're staying there for weeks, they're not interested. So I there's only one motel in town that wasn't full, so I stayed here. 100 bucks, bargain. Um, and the front door's green, so that's nice. I've gone to the trouble of painting that green. And number one, of course, which makes sense. I am off to Mount Gambia, not very far, uh, but there's a lot to see between here and Mount Gambia. It's the, the Coorong, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, hopefully it's not too windy. It's pretty gray out there, 12 degrees.
think I might have bitten off a bit more than I could chew with this hill. Got softer and softer and bumpier and bumpier. Looked pretty good at the start, but yeah, so anyway, I've done a tactical retreat, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. But anyway, back down the hill. Windy here today. Um, this is called the granites or granites, which apparently is to do with those three granite boulders sticking out of the water over there. So still not what you call hot, but um, good riding weather. Clearing up, it was a bit grey this morning, but it's blue, bluish the direction that I'm heading in, so not too bad. Um, yeah. No more sand yet, so I'm not going to have a crack at this track down to the beach. We've arrived in Kingston. Kingston SE, I don't know what the SE stands for, special edition presumably. Oh yes, the giant lobster. <laughs> It's very informative. Genuine fiberglass. This makes the big prawn in Ballina look a little bit weak, I'm afraid to say, Mr. Perry. <laughs> I'd call it a crayfish, but they call them lobsters in South Australia. I don't know if they're different or not, but anyway, there it is. And it's a beaut. bakery was excellent. I had a apple slice and a very good coffee. So highly recommend if you're ever in Kingston to check out Mitchell's Bakery. They have three bakeries in town but she tells me that's the best one and I tend to agree with her. Apple slice was excellent. old jail. There's not a huge amount of it left, but um, I'll take it. I'll take an old jail, whatever I can find it, even if it's only a foot and a half tall. Why do morons do this? Alana, moron. Wayno, moron. Neil, moron. Let's see if we can find any other morons. Pierre, moron. Adam, moron. Morons, 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 morons. So many morons in the world. Hey, here's an old thing. Let's completely ruin it by being a fucking moron. Moron. Keegan, moron. Well, the name like Keegan, obviously. Not the bad star. Matt, moron. It's only three cells, but they probably had ten people in each cell, so...
I finally managed to get close to one of these wind turbine wind things. What I'm mostly interested in is how they hold them into the ground. They must have some serious foundations because, um, by gee, there'd be a bit of load on them when they're um, going flat chat. So uh, if anyone out there knows anything about that, feel free to um, keep it to yourself, I suppose. I don't know how I'd ever find out. I suppose you could leave a comment if you really wanted to. That would be interesting. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, you you uh, joined me in my uh, my motel room in Mount Gambier, the Grand Central Motel. And I'll tell you what, it is grand. It's pretty old school. Let me show you the outside. It's the classic layout. You just you can't beat it. Food hole, brekkie hole. Don't use those anymore, unfortunately. Bit a couple of bits of cold toast come through, but um, it's got air conditioning, decent TV, microwave, old school bathroom, angled toilet which I think is a nice feature and it comes with the little paper strip where it's been sanitized for your protection so that's nice there's it was raining when I arrived yesterday afternoon and I'm not a masochist so I obtained this room for the paltry sum of $90 on top of which the Indian guy who's running it who's lovely by the way gave me a picnic as in the picnic chocolate bar because he liked the look of me and he had some other around Australia motorbike guy stay here and he, for some reason he likes motorbike riders that are riding around Australia so he gave me a picnic bar. So for 90 bucks I paid 80 bucks for a square of gravel in Exmouth in a caravan park. So for 10 dollars more I reckon this is the rolled gold bargain. Are in Mount Gambier at the Blue Lake. There's two, there's two crater lakes here. There's one called the Blue Lake and one just called the Lake. I think I don't know. I'll find out when we get to it. But it's it's a result of some volcanic activity way back in the day, hundreds of years ago when the Earth was formed. 15 to 40 million years. If you believe that, you believe anything. Average depth of 70 meters.
a busy road this one. So there it is. Welcome to Victoria. Not much fanfare with the sign, is there? It's pretty modest. Pretty modest sort of uh, marker to the entrance to a to a state. There it is. Um, just five nights in South Australia, but I've enjoyed it very much. So. Um, but now on to Victoria, Port Ferry, and then Apollo Bay tonight if everything goes according to plan, which it generally does. This is the Yam Buck Hotel. It was to be one of our original um, overnight stops back in the early planning stages when Pete was still with me. Uh, Pete used to come here on his holidays when he was a kid. That would have been great to come back and have a look. Unfortunately, she's all closed up and it looks like it's been closed up for a while. Uh, and it's pouring rain, so I'm using it as a bit of a shelter at the Yeah. It's, uh, there's, uh, there is no one at the inn, unfortunately. But it has turned out to be a good place to shelter from the rain while I wait for it to pass over and I'll push on to Port Ferry. Very nice. Bloody cold though, 10 degrees. It's just been raining, we can see. That's what I've just escaped from, but if I stop here too long, it's going to catch up to me again. So I'm just going to make this quick and I'm going to zip on down to Apollo Bay.
I only just took my helmet off a second ago because I think I was scared some Japanese tourists, but I've been walking around with the helmet. I think it's just shit house. But uh, it's an amazing spot. Just absolutely amazing. You, know, you can keep your grad straight and by. I think, I think this has got to be, quite frankly. Looks like it'd be a good spot for a swim actually. I'm not quite sure how you get down there. Eight degrees at the moment, it's the coldest I've ridden in so far. 
and uh, the heated hand grips are only just keeping up. You know. So I've just made it successfully over the Otways without coming unstuck. It's a slippery little road and it seems to be wet every time I go over it. Although last time we went over it, with uh, I was on my CBR 1100 with my beautiful wife and some friends of ours on a ZX9 Jane Kerry. Unfortunately, they did slip off on one of the corners, uh, but they were uninjured apart from perhaps Joe's pride. So we've just come all the way over there, and we're now there. And Apollo Bay is there. And I've got just enough fuel to get me there. I've got about 8k spare because uh, there's not a lot of opportunities to buy petrol along this road, I've just found out. in Apollo Bay yesterday afternoon with about half a litre of fuel left in the petrol tank. Uh, it was raining and it was eight degrees. So I decided to go with a cheap motel yet again and I found the beachfront motel for $99, absolute bargain. And uh, anyway, so today I'm gonna head off to, towards Melbourne, finish off the Great Ocean Road. Uh, hopefully it won't be raining all day. It's still a bit grey out there, but there's a little bit of blue sky. Head over the uh, ferry and then uh, down the Mornington Peninsula. Stay there for the night and then, uh, yeah, work it out from there. Hopefully it won't rain today. It'll be lovely. I'm not 100% sure where I am. What's he asking? It's annoying as shit. 